I know we can't prove it's the same person, but the pattern's too striking to ignore. It doesn't need to be the same person. That's what's wonderful. I will have Shimon dragged for this. To be fair, it was the secretary who called the charges Manusha, not Shimon himself. Secretaries don't put words in the rabbi's mouth. It's the other way around. Manusha. My congregation and students will foam at the mouth when they hear this. Make a written record of your conversation with Shimon's secretary. Every word. And file it with the clerk of the Special Council for False Prophecies at the Archive. It must be signed and dated by a ranking Levite. Do you understand my instructions? Yes, but why all the exactitude? Because when this Jesus of Nazareth amasses enough followers and enough detractors, it will get Rome's attention. And then everyone will know. Know what, Rabbi? That Shimon was well aware of these offenses and dismissed them. His obsession with reforming God's immutable law will be exposed for the negligent, lazy, dangerous abomination it is. Not just Shimon. We opened a case with the Sanhedrin, and Nicodemus dismissed it as immaterial. Nicodemus, I've long suspected the lamps were going dim in that house, if you get my meaning. Well, I don't know about that. I... Spread the word. Tell every scribe, Pharisee, Sadducee, Essen, priest, teacher, and Levite you know. Why, Rabbi? First, the facts. Self-identifies using a divine title from the prophet Daniel. Son of man. Claims authority to forgive sins. Violates Shabbat on multiple occasions. And commands others to do so. Eats with tax collectors and sinners. Degenerate. Now, the speculation. Speak it out, I don't have all day. One of John the Baptizer's students is among his followers, and there are rumors of a second. Delicious. You'll never be pestered by that freak again. In Capernaum, there were women of ill repute seen at table with him at the tax collector's house. You're telling me women are among his followers? You asked for speculation. Keep going. He consorts with Gentiles, specifically the Ethiopian woman who knew his name and his origin. The last is just very vague and small. Nothing is small when it comes to fidelity to God's law. Very vague and small. Nothing is small when it comes to fidelity to God's law. Matthew chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. But I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. And if you had only known what this statement means, that I desire compassion and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the innocent. The Pharisees could not see who Yeshua was because their reverence for him was a tradition that was learned by rote. And rote is the mechanical or habitual repetition of something that is learned. See, the Pharisees, by their tradition, has made the word of God of no effect. See, they condemned other people and accused them because they didn't see their own need for a savior. They didn't see that they have broken God's laws. They hadn't seen that they they need a savior. They didn't see what the prophets and the law pointed to. They didn't see the fulfillment of the law. So they went around and creating their own laws and their own rules because they considered themselves as God. Why would I say as God? Because they were the ones deciding what was good and what was evil. Lest you die. You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. See, just as the Pharisees, Eve was given the temptation to be like God, knowing good and evil. But God gave them a commandment not to eat of that tree, not to eat of its fruits, to let him be God and obey his commands and honor him as creator. But the Pharisees chose to be God themselves and they created laws and heavy burdens and put it on the people, as the Bible says. 
Luke chapter 11 verse 46. But he said, Woe to you lawyers as well, because you weigh men down with burdens, man-made rules, unreasonable requirements, which are hard to bear, and you yourselves will not even touch the burdens with one of your fingers. It's Shabbat. What are you doing? Torah forbids carrying a mat on Shabbat. Not Torah, the oral tradition. Yes, transporting objects from one domain to another violates Shabbat. The man who healed Do you me. not realize what just happened here? Why are you trying to make this about Shabbat? He said to me, take up your bed and walk. <laughs> who did? Who told you that? He did. I, I don't know. He didn't tell me his name. No. Of course not. He performs a magic trick and tells you to commit a sin. A false prophet. This will be reported. You report whatever you want. Are you standing on two legs? So we have two types of people looking at Yeshua at this very moment. We have those who cannot see their need of him. And then you have someone who sees their need. I don't know. You don't need this pool. You only need me. So, do you want to be healed? So let's go. Get up. Pick up your mat. Now let's discuss one of the most controversial topics that many people debate about all the time. The law. Now the Pharisees had the law. They had the scriptures. But why were they not able to recognize Yahshua? So let's look at this illustration. Now the reason why the Pharisees was unable to recognize Yeshua because they was not waiting on him. They didn't recognize their need for a savior because they believed that through the law that they were made righteous. You don't need a savior if you feel that you are righteous enough, that you kept God's commandments and that you felt that you were God. So the law reveals to us what sin is, pointing us to a need for a savior. Now the prophets gave us hope that the savior was coming. The savior was coming and it, and it proved who he was. Now in John, when Yeshua came, he was the fulfillment of the need and the hope. He was the fulfillment of the need and the hope. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 says this think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not come to destroy but to fulfill so Yeshua came not to do away with the law not to do away with the prophets but to fulfill the need and to fulfill the hope so what the church has done today is they say the law is done away with. So we take away the need for a savior. We take away the fact that God has a standard. And now to the rest of the world, you're saying that you need a savior becomes why? Why would I need this savior? 
because we teach the law is done away with. There's nothing to bring man guilty under God's authority. So Yeshua told this parable about the rich man and Lazarus. And he said this when the rich man began to ask Lazarus if he could drop a drip of water on his tongue. And when Abraham said he could not, he then began to ask Abraham if he could send someone to warn his brothers. It says this in Luke chapter 16, verse 27. So the rich man said, then, Father Abraham, I beg you, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, in order that he may solemnly warn them and witness to them, so that they too will not come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have the scriptures given by Moses and the writings of the prophet. Let them listen to them. Abraham said they have the law and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he replied, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, then they will repent. They will change their old way of thinking and seek God and his righteousness. But Abraham said to him, if they do not listen to the message of Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. So what is he saying? If he, if a person does not recognize their need for a savior, they will never put their hope in the savior and be waiting and looking for him. And they would never receive the one that has risen from the dead because they don't see why they need someone to rise from the dead. So we have to understand that the law reveals to us what sin is. This is why when you see the law and the prophets, it's always first. And Abraham was explaining to the rich man that without you seeing a need for a savior, you won't believe in the prophets when they gave evidence of this savior that will come. This is why the Pharisees couldn't see Yeshua because they wasn't looking for him. When the disciples heard that Yeshua was on the scene, they said the one that Moses talked about and the prophets is here. They've been waiting for him because they had hope in this savior that was coming. They had hope in what pointed to him. And when Yeshua walked on the scene and he gave his life at the sacrificial, as the sacrificial blood of the lamb that died for all of our sins, he fulfilled the need and the hope. But does that mean the law is now done away with? First Timothy chapter one, let's drop down to verse eight. Now we know without any doubt that the law is good if one uses it lawfully and appropriately. Understanding the fact that the law is not enacted for the righteous person, the one in right standing with the God, but for the lawless and the rebellious people, for the ungodly and the sinful, for the irreverent and profane, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for sexually immoral persons, for homosexuals, for the kidnappers and slave traders, for liars and perjurers, and for whoever else that is contrary to sound doctrine. 
according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which we have been entrusted. Remember when the woman that was caught in committing adultery was brought to Yeshua. He said to them, those without sin cast the first stone. And all of them began to drop their stones because they knew that they were just as guilty. As the law brings everyone under sin, it brings everyone guilty. He didn't say to her, there's none of your accusers, go and be free from the law. He told her to go and sin no more. This was a great example of the law not being enacted for the righteous, for the ones who have chosen to put their faith in Yeshua. He has set us free from the penalty of the law. He has given us grace, but this doesn't mean we have a free ticket to break God's laws. See, the law points us to Christ, but in Christ, in Yeshua HaMashiach, we see the law differently. And we're going to get into a little bit of that next week. We're going to get into the oldness of the letter, but the newness of spirit. See, Yeshua, he broke down the essence of the law by saying that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. And then he said that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We will get into that next week. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Bible study today. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your leadership. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth, Father. I pray for each and every person that heard this message today, that they will go back and study this for themselves, that not to just take my words, Father, but let you and your Holy Spirit speak to them individually, Father. We thank you and we love you, Father. In Yeshua's name, so be it.